and relaxing and sometimes frustrating because he said it and I wished I had said it. <laughs> and I do, do honor our pastor and his sweet wife and Brother Anthony, Lysandra, Kingston. Are they here? They're in the nursery. That counts. <laughs> Praise God. Also good to have my wife here. Amen. All the way from Blue Goose, Tennessee. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and she's going to come in just a few seconds. And she and Anna. This is, a, this is a missionary service. We love this church. We do. We really do love this church. We love uh, all the people here. And forgive me that I don't remember everybody's name. Sometimes I have trouble remembering my name. So they gave me a little thing to put it on a... And carry it here in my pocket. Oh, yeah, that's who I am. <laughs> and uh, as Brother Trimble mentioned, we've been, we were missionaries to the Netherlands. We were appointed to Europe in 1982. We went first to Germany as AIM workers. And then 1984, we went to the Netherlands. And then just 2011, we became what's called the regional director for Europe. Europe and the Middle East it consists of 76 countries. And Sister Tunnel will tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, an awesome responsibility, and we're excited about revival in the Middle East. Good things are happening in Europe, in uh, the North Europe, South Europe, Central Europe, West and East. The good things are happening. There's revival, uh, unprecedented revival. Uh, <laughs> praise God. They just had a, had a leadership uh, meeting in Kiev, Ukraine, and there is revival in the Ukraine. You know of all this, the situation with Ukraine. Uh, that's happening there, but good things are happening too. Uh, people are coming to God. People are being saved. Uh, they have decided that uh, that the the only option, the only way out of the of the confusion and the frustration of their country is to find a Savior, and they have found Him in Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> and and you also know what's happening in Iraq with the uh, ISIS, the Islamic. Uh, Fundamentalists, the, the, the terrorists the, uh, that are taking over parts of Syria and Iraq. We had a pastor, and I'm not sure if I shared this with the church here. We had a pastor in the city of Mosul. Mosul is a major city of the northern part of Iraq, close to the Kurdish area. And Pastor Anwar was there. He had a church. His family was there. His, his, his older children have grown and left home. And that's the, that's the city that fell to the is. This is a number of uh, weeks ago. They were able to flee the city and go to the city of Erbil. If you find it on the map, it's not too far. And that was also a city where a lot of UN workers or a lot of another Christian um, uh, relief agency was there. And just a few weeks ago, since, since um, they came up with the idea of bombing these people, they, they thought that would help. And so far, it hasn't helped a lot. But the city of Erbil started to fall and parts of it were taken. We were working desperately to get our pastor and his wife out of that city. And the challenge was where could they go and how can they get out? Well, thank God the, a miracle happened. Just last week, we was able to get a visa for them. They were able to fly from Erbil to the city of Amman, Jordan. And so now it's my understanding that they're in Amman, Jordan. So thank God for that. Now... Wish we could do that for all of the Christian people of that part, but uh, uh, we are very, was very concerned about this man as he was one of our leaders. If he had been captured or whatever, it would have been very, very uh, devastating, very horrible things would have happened to him and his wife, but thank God they got out. And then that's a double, it's a double-edged prayer, sword prayer, because we, we have a church. We have a number of churches in northern uh, Jordan, in Jordan, the country of Jordan. We have five churches there three of which are Arabic churches. And our pastor, the missionary who's pastoring that church was Cindy White. Maybe you remember Cindy White. She was one of our missionaries, a single young lady who uh, contacted disease and got an pneumonia and died. And uh, so we did not have a pastor for that church. So we have a, a young lady over there, an Amer. She's 24 years old, single girl, pastoring five churches. And uh, that's, I mean, that's kind of hard and so brother uh, Anwar is able now to come and help and he's going to help pastor probably three of those five churches if not 
maybe he can only do two, but but at any rate, he speaks the language. He'll be a great help. And so it was a it was a an ans- a double answer to a prayer. So we're very excited, very happy about that. That we are seeing good things happen in the midst of all of the other atrocities and horrible. Uh, things that are happening in that part of the world. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for being a part of missions. This is a missions giving church, and uh, we appreciate uh, all you do. You've you've you you've sent money. You have sent people. Uh, Sister Shannon and Toby in in Nuremberg, Germany. Uh, Sister Shannon comes from this church. This is her home church, and so that's that's exciting. And others have come through here and are now laboring on the mission field and. And I'm, and I'm also speaking to those that are here, young people, uh, not so young people. Uh, <laughs> believe it or not, we have an have a individual 52 years old applying to go to the mission field. So that's the not so young group. Uh, but if God speaks to you about missions, the first thing you do when you, when you feel a tug on your heart that God wants you to do something is you talk to your pastor. And let him know that you're interested in doing something for missions. He'll pray with you because I believe that God works in a divine order. And so talk to your pastor about it. And, uh, and then we'll talk to you as well. Because I'm sure wherever it will be, it will be somewhere within the Europe, Middle East region. Uh, <laughs> if it's not, it's, I don't, can't see how it could be God. But, <laughs> but there are times I was wrong on that point. And... I'm the first one to admit it, but praise God. I want my wife and Anna to come in and can you daily in the Netherlands, you can also do the gebed card as you want. Have you the gebed card by you? Yeah, we can. Praise the Lord. Hello. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'll stay right here. I'm going to stay right here. We're not going to sing because we have colds. But uh, it is for us also before we have we have colds. But it is for us also before we have colds. But it is an honor to have Anna with us in a service. But it is an honor to have Anna with us in a service. And this, darum können we from all Netherlands speak, weet je? So that's why we can speak Dutch tonight. We have been for bijna 30 years in Netherland gewoond. We have lived almost 30 years in. Holland. Onze kinderen zijn daar opgegroeid. Our children grew up there. Ze zaten in de Nederlandse scholen. They were in the Dutch schools. En uh, ze hebben mensen tot de Heer gebracht. And they Hallelujah. brought people to the Lord. En ik dank de Heer dat onze kinderen houden van de Heer. And I'm thankful that our children love the Lord. Ik dank de Heer dat ze hebben een liefde voor de Heer en voor mensen die and de Heer niet kennen. And Hallelujah. I'm glad that they have a love for the Lord and for people that they don't know. En uh, wij zijn natuurlijk opengevonden over wat de Heer in Europa en uh, Midden-Oost doet. We are excited about what the Lord is doing in Europe and the Middle East. And uh, the, my man heeft al een beetje gezegd. And my husband already told you some. En ik herinner me uh, fa- bijna vijf jaar geleden. And I remember about five years ago. Ik moet jullie vertellen. I must tell you. Wanneer wij naar Nederland gingen. When we went to Europe. To Holland. Wij gingen daar om te wonen. We went there to live. En daar te sterven. And to starve. To die. Sorry. <laughs> Dutch is rusty. Say Sorry. is hard. We had no plan to leave Holland. We had no plan to leave Holland. But about five years ago, the Lord has begun the last alone for Netherlands a bit to let us go. But about five years ago, the Lord started releasing the burden slightly from us. And we were asked to take care of Europe and the Middle East region. And we were asked to take care of the Europe and Middle East region. And I couldn't imagine. And I could not imagine. That it can last for so far long that the Klaikatites are the hebe. That I would be able to have a burden for that many countries at one time. Maar de Heer heeft ons een liefde in onze harten gegeven. But the Lord has given us a love in our hearts. And uh, we zijn zo blij. And we are so happy. And uh, mensen hebben mij gevraagd: ben je niet bang om naar die landen te gaan? And people ask me: aren't you afraid to go to countries like that? Waarom moeten wij bang zijn als de Heer ons heeft geroepen? Why should we be afraid if the Lord has called us? Want there? Hij gaat voor ons. Because He goes before us. And Hij bereidt de weg. And He prepares Hallelujah. the way. There's a hoof and noit bang to say. So we don't have to be afraid. And they have the here wonder seen do. We see the Lord do miracles. Amen. And they they sign so blight over what the here do. We are so 
happy with what the and Lord is I'll doing. And I'll stop because it takes two times and as long. And I'll stop because it takes two times as long. That gives you a little taste of Dutch. That's what we spoke for almost 30 years. Praise the Lord. And I guess we will ever love those people and ever love their language. And um, just as we do the other nations that we are responsible for. And um, I just want to share just a couple of things before I'm seated. My heart is so full because God is so great and he's doing great things. But there are many things we cannot share publicly that the Lord is doing because the Lord is giving us a revival amongst the Muslim people. And that just makes our hearts rejoice. There's so many of those people who are sincere. They really want what we have. Praise the Lord. And we must not be afraid to share that with them. Hallelujah. We had a revival service in the country of Turkey. And uh, while our evangelist, and you know him, many of you, Brother Show Walter was preaching there in Turkey. And uh, he had a Muslim translator. And uh, this man was not saved. We didn't have anybody else. You, you have to use sometimes what you got. Right. So we had this unsaved Muslim, and he was translating as Brother Showalter began to preach about revealing Jesus. Amen. And as he began to preach, he said, all of a sudden, his translator went silent. And when he looked over at him, tears were flowing down his face. And he said, I see it. I see it. Jesus is God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That man has now been filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. Oh, hallelujah. And you know what else? That man said, this is what every sincere Muslim person needs to hear, and we need to share it with them. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You may be seated. Right before I'm seated, I'll just share one other testimony. Um, it's been a couple years ago now. We went to Turkey, and uh, I could share many things about what God just did. And we saw 14 people baptized in the Jordan River, and it goes on and on and on. Uh, but this particular service we were in, um, there were Muslim people there. We had to be very careful about everything we were doing there, and we could not go on the street and invite anyone. But we did go on the streets. And we prayed silent prayers. We prayed for the city. And we prayed for God to send the people. And guess what? God sent the people all right because our God can do anything. Thank you, Jesus. So we had more than 20 people that we took down in the basement and baptized in Jesus' name. But one of those men, I watched him get in the Holy Ghost. He was a big, tall, lanky fellow, had his arms stretched out like this and was receiving the Holy Ghost. After that service, I found out that they had brought him across the border one week prior from Syria. And the way they brought him across was they put him on a board and put him up under a truck. And that's how he came over. And, you know, I thought about it, and I thought, you know, he thought he was coming to get some freedom. Well, he got the best kind of freedom he could ever get when he got to know the Lord and to know the truth of God's Word. There's so many things we could share, but I just want to thank you because you are our church family on this side. This is our pastor. This is our pastor's wife, and I know that this church prays for us. And we can't have to have money. Of course we do. We can't go without it. But I never want to go without the prayers of God's people. That's why I'm not afraid, because we bind together in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I want to thank you for that. Thank you for your love, your kindness to us. You always receive us just like we're your family. And that's how we feel about you. We love you and appreciate you. And Thank you so much, Pastor, for allowing us to share our burden tonight. God bless you all. There's sound with it. It has become lethargic, compromising, and apathetic. God help us to answer the call and take the gospel, the whole gospel, to the whole world. We can do it, and we're doing it. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Conference in Barcelona, Spain. Amen. Seventh anniversary of this church. 
Jesus is here. Jesus está aquí. And anything can happen. Y todo puede pasar. Hallelujah. You're more than a conqueror. Usted es más que vencedor. You're never going to have to die on a cross. Usted no tiene que morir en la he cruz. did it for you. Él ya lo ha hecho por ti. He won the victory. Él ganó la victoria. He's the conqueror. Él es... Capture cities for Christ. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It was our goal last year to start 50 new churches and 50 new preachers. And we were able to start 87 new churches. We were able to license 89 new preachers. Praise God last year. Praise God. <clears throat> we want to do it again this year. And from the reports I'm reading that are coming in, it is happening. On the back uh, shelf back there by the sound booth, there's some prayer cards like this. It's called the prayer, call to prayer. I'm not sure if we left these here before or not. If we have, go ahead and take another one. Uh, these are answer the, answer the call to prayer for Europe and the Middle East. We divided our region into five areas. We have five areas, three sub-regions and five areas. And we have the names and addresses, the email addresses of our five prayer coordinators on the back of this card. If you want to join one of the prayer teams of one of the five areas of the Europe Middle East region, you can write, send an email to, uh, to any one of these. If you want to join them all, that's fine too. They're only going to send you emails about prayer needs, prayer requests, sometimes uh, urgent needs that are in their area. I will say if you choose the one for Middle East, uh, Brother Parker, they, they're very careful on what they send out. But uh, it, it, I do encourage you, they're on the table back there, take a prayer card and join the call to prayer for the Europe Middle East region, praise God. And it's um, 7.54 and we get done at eight o'clock, is that right? <laughs> yeah, I'll take my, my time, but it's your time I'm concerned about. <laughs> they said, just turn the lights out when you're done, just, you know, praise God, we don't wanna. I like coming to church here and I wanna keep liking come to church here. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Thank the Lord. Uh, if you would go with me in your Bibles to the book of Matthew. I've got a two and a half hour lesson here. That we're going to condense to 15 or 20. <laughs> or 30. Or 35 or 40. <laughs> My goal is to get done before you do. Matthew chapter 5, verse 2, it says, and this is, do you, know, do you know what Matthew 5 is? What is Matthew 5? Sermon on the Mount. It's the, uh, uh, the time when Jesus gave a lesson, and then the same lesson is given in the book of Luke chapter 6, and it's called the Sermon on the Plain. Some say that they were the same sermon, same, sermon, same message, and Luke took his notes, and Matthew took his notes, and so forth and so on. Now, somebody else said, no, it was this... Do two different messages that Jesus used material twice, and I think I will go with that one. It fits my lifestyle. <laughs> Matthew chapter 2, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when... Men shall revile you or hate you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for mine sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so, for, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. You're the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth, thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of man. You're the light of the world. 
a city that is a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Praise God. Let's thank the Lord together for his word. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this great and awesome group of people, this church family, our pastor and the leaders here. We pray, God, that you would touch our hearts right now, anoint the lips of clay to speak God words of life, encouragement and blessing into the hearts and flesh. God that is able to save their soul. Be with us, we pray, oh God. Touch and anoint in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. For the next few minutes, I want to talk to you about the attitudes of being. We call this, uh, these, these first uh, three through, ch- verses 3 through uh, 11, the blessed, uh, blessed are ye, blessed. We call that the beatitudes or the attitude of being. It's the attitude of who we are, of what we are. The attitudes of being, it's an attitude. And attitudes are what we are. It's who we are. It's what makes us what we are. And there are eight here, actually nine, attitudes of being, of being a Christian, of being a believer. Uh, And I don't see these nine attitudes as disconnected from one another, but they are connected they are a sequence, a progression, like a ladder. One leads to the next. And you can't skip one. You can't go from the first to the third or the third to the sixth and skip what's between. You, 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 you have to take them in the order. In fact, they are a natural progression. One automatically leads to the next one. And each one of these attitudes has a benefit or a reward that's attached with it. And in order to get the reward or the benefit, you must be blessed with that attitude, the attitude of being, the be attitude. And uh, we call it attitude of gratitude. Attitude is who you are. Attitude has to do with your your mental outlook, how you look at things. It's, it's your mental picture. It's kind of like you need every now and then a checkup from the neck up. Every now and then we got to examine the way we think and why we think like we think. And if we don't know why we think what we think when we think what we think, then we need to think again. <laughs> we need, every, you know, somebody says, I need a, you know, I need a good brainwashing with the word of God. You know what? That, it, we need to wash our minds every now, clarify and clean our thoughts. I'm not talking about manipulating somebody's thoughts. I'm talking about allowing the word of God to help form and shape our mental outlook on things and on life. So that when we have, when we have a situation that we don't know which way to turn, we will have already made the decision. <clears throat> we don't have to decide on the spot. If you will decide here and now and then allow that that decision, that idea, that mental capacity to become a part of your attitude, you'll be blessed. And you'll get a benefit. There's a reward that goes with it. To be blessed, in fact, in the in the Dutch Bible, it's called the salig spreking. And does that make sense? Of course, it doesn't. But it 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 and that word can also mean to be lucky. Well, I don't believe in luck like a lot of people believe in luck. But I believe in luck when it is opportunity that meets with preparation. If you have prepared yourself, an opportunity comes along, and uh oh, look what happened to me. It's because you were ready for it, and we got to have. Good attitudes. Somebody said 90% of your living for God is attitude. Maybe more than that. And it's how you think about yourself, but there's much more real enjoyment in thinking in life of yourself in a light that is in tune with or is in order with the scriptures and not so much what just makes me happy. In fact, part of 
Part of learning to walk as a Christian and a believer is learning to be yourself. To be who you are. We're not trying to make cookie cutter Christian. We're not trying to make robots. You know, I, I, don't, I don't worship like pastor worship. I don't t- t- preach like... We don't try to imitate one another. We learn to be ourselves. And when you become an apostolic, Bible-based, Holy Ghost-filled Christian, you can be yourself. And... And be, you can be the best at being who you are when you allow the scriptures and the attitudes of the, 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 the beatitudes, the attitudes of being, when you allow them to adjust your attitude to be the best that you can be. Trying to be somebody else is not the right thing to do. Furthermore, it's frustrating. Trying to be somebody else. Be yourself. Nobody else can do it better. Amen. Don't try to be somebody else. Hallelujah. Let me see here. What was I going to say? <laughs> Don't want to ever confuse the, the attitude with the benefit. Blessed are. And then it gives a attitude. And then it says for theirs. And it gives the benefit. And we want to remember that the attitude is really the reward. Yeah. Even though we get something more besides that. Amen. We want to look to, we want to make it all of the way to the top. We want to get all of this. And yet, when you look at it carefully and in the right light, it not, doesn't necessarily come one here and five years later, I get number two. But when you look at it right, it comes as a package deal. It comes together. He starts out, blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, that doesn't say poor spirit, you know. It's poor in spirit, humility, an attitude of humility, of, of being willing to take second place if you have to. Poor in spirit is, a, is an attitude, a quality. And, and the benefit is, he said, you receive the kingdom of heaven. That's the benefit of a humble Poor in spirit, a humble attitude. And then the pretense of humility or the, 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 the false side of humility is, a, is the spirit of criticism. Be careful what we criticize. Be careful what we, uh, what we have the right or we are just to criticize. And there is a danger when we begin to criticize that we infect, influence others in our criticism... And they will begin to think what we're saying is valid and correct because after all, he's a humble person and he wouldn't be saying that unless he was truly correct. Hallelujah. Then it says, blessed are those that mourn. They will be comforted. There comes the time when you were in a spirit of uh, you need to be the service we had Sunday re- referring to the fact we need it. We need a time that we can reflect on. We cast it on the Lord and we give it to him and, and allow him to fill uh, the empty place. And he comforts us. He gives us the spirit of comfort. When you come to the Lord in a spirit of, 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 of humility, it brings you to a place of repentance. A place of repentance will take you to the place of being baptized in Jesus' name. And when you've been baptized in Jesus' name, the comforter will come and you'll be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's the gospel message that we proclaim around this world. It's not any different on the other side of the planet as it is right here. Here in St. Charles. We preach that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again. And that's our message. Yes, yes. And whatever it was that brought you to repentance, the Bible says in Romans, that it's the goodness of God that brings you. The goodness of God brought you to repentance. And whatever it was that brought you to repentance, that brought you to Him, is the goodness of God. It may not have been something pleasant at the time. It might not have been something that you would consider good. But if you came to God, if you found your your place at the foot of the cross asking for forgiveness in a spirit of humility and brokenness, and you are baptized, filled with His Spirit tonight because of whatever it was that happened, that was the goodness of God. Whatever it takes to get me saved, I want to be saved. I want to stay saved. 
I'm not in this part time. I'm not in, in this just for a good time. I want to be saved. I want to go all the way. And it's his goodness. His goodness brought me to repentance. Hallelujah. And the comforter will come. The comforter will come. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are they that mourn. They that repent. They that have sorrow and tears. And say, Lord, I am so sorry for what I was and what I became. And, 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 and thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. He will comfort you. And then he said, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. The word meekness comes from a word that means to be sachmudach. Makes sense? <laughs> it means teachable. It means you're teachable. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those that can be taught. I hope to God that I can be taught. I hope I can sit in, in the Bible class of Pastor Tremble or Brother Anthony or, 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 or Brother Sean or Brother Young. And I can listen. You know what? I learn things from these young men. I, I thank God. We had a young man in our church in Holland. Just had been, been in the church a short time. About Javon's age. You're 27. That was a compliment. I know he's 37. <laughs> and he was a new convert, Brother Tremble. He began to teach things. And I thought, that kid, I thought, where did he get that? You know something? We want to be, I want to be teachable. Be teachable. Allow, allow somebody that you think, well, he can't teach me anything. Praise God. I heard one elder say that he's learned something from every preacher. Now, there were a few close calls, he said, but. <laughs> Be teachable. Oh, teach me. I want to learn. I want to grow. And he, they inherit. They will inherit the kingdom. They will inherit the earth. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And the attitude of being teachable is a spirit in the spirit of meekness with the love of God for the love of souls. It, it, it is in. It is a certainty that we understand that this earth belongs to him and I belong to him. He's in me and I'm in him. And when we get in him, we can be taught to walk like him. And then we can say we are. We are the inhabitants. We are the owners. We are the salt. We are the light. We are a part of this community called the planet, the global planet earth. We're here. And he wants to give it to his children. Praise God. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, it says. They shall, they shall be filled. Hunger and thirst after righteousness. Don't be, satisfied. Don't be satisfied with anything that's not right. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. Amen. I want to desire that. Blessed are they which, blessed are the merciful, for they shall inherit mercy, for she, they shall obtain mercy, rather. Merciful, 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 be merciful. We taught a lesson here a while back on, on grace and mercy. We need to allow grace to teach us the principles and the precepts of the word of God that will put a spirit inside of us, an attitude inside of us that we're going to be Christians no matter what. We're going to learn how to study to be quiet. Sometimes that, 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 that it's best nothing said than something said. Amen. Never miss a good opportunity to be quiet. God help us. Sometimes we need to learn, and I'm guilty. You know, how many times have we engaged mouth before we engage brain? God help us. Amen. Be right. Be walk. Walk in righteousness. Not the righteousness that I've prescribed, prescribed or pastor prescribed, but the righteousness that is out of the word of God by the spirit of God himself that will convict and touch and lead and guide and bring you into a place. How many times do we hear things taught and preached and we wonder, is that right? Is that correct? And I'll tell you something. If it came out of the Bible, if it came out of the book, it is right. Yes, right. right. Amen. Yes. 
Merciful. Merciful. Don't accuse. Don't accuse. Learning to be forgiving. Amen. Amen. <laughs> In fact, uh, if, you, if you can't show mercy, if you can't forgive, we're in trouble. We have a problem. A little later in this sermon that Jesus was teaching, it, it, the Sermon on the Mount takes Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. And in chapter 6, he's teaching them on prayer. And he gives them what we call the model prayer or the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. I think we have it on the screen. After this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And then look what it says. The next, and forgive us our debts as we forgive. Our Do you realize this is right smack dab in the middle of the Lord's prayer? This is the heart. This is, the, this is where, this is what really it probably all centers around. Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our trespasses. As one of the other writers said, as we forgive those who trespass against, forgive us our debts. And then he goes on and lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. That is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And then verse 14, look what it says. 14 says, if we forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Thank God. That's a plus. Thank God, I have an assurity that I can be forgiven. All I need to do is learn how to forgive. Amen. Forgive and be forgiven. But the next one is the catch when it says, For if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. There's a, there's a parable that Jesus told, and, and very quickly, I want, it's a parable in Matthew chapter 18 that when the, when the, when the king was looking over his books and doing his taxes at the end of the tax year or something. <laughs> wonder why that came to my mind. <laughs> he found there was one of his servants that owed him $10 million. Yeah. 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 Called him in and said, you owe, me, you owe me 10 million bucks. And the man said, I'm sorry, I don't have it. And the king says, throw him in jail. Sell his wife and Kid, kids, kid, <laughs> until it's all paid. And the man fell down and he said, have compassion on me. He said, and I will pay everything. Have compassion on me. And the man in, in, in his situation, I don't know how you ever thought he could have paid back 10 million. But he said he would. And the king looked at him and had compassion on him and said, I forgive you. He took his debt and pushed it aside and forgave him of his debt. And you know what? I, 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 try, I try to imagine. I try to, what did that man think? What did he feel? How would you feel if you had been forgiven of $10 million? Just try it once. <laughs> how, how did it feel? You, woo, woo, woo. I think people would run the aisle. Even if there were no aisles. They'd run, they'd shout. I mean, forgive them, 10 minutes. But you know, I don't know this. Now, this is my imagination. This is what I think maybe could have possibly, maybe could have possibly happened. Maybe. I want you to be, understand this is, this is the MLT version. <laughs> he got to thinking, I have a special place with the king. He, he thinks I... <laughs> he thinks I am something out just outstanding he thinks i'm so special you know the king he just gave me a 10 million <laughs> if you need anything just let me know uh, 
You know, don't, could, could that not have been? As, as he's walking and wandering and meandering through the street, he finds one of his old buddies, buddies and said, you owe me five dollars. I picked on you already to do this one. You owe me five bucks. Pay up. It said he grabbed him by the throat. <laughs> we need to work on his theatrics a little bit. Five dollars. And he said, pay me everything right now. And the man said, I don't have it. Just have compassion. I don't have it right now. Just give Oh, you don't know who I am. I have special privileges with the king. I am somebody you, hmm, you don't, did you see my name tag? <laughs> Throw him in prison! Sell his wife and his little girl. <laughs> and pay it off! And they threw him in prison. And the, the servants heard about this. They saw this. And, and they realized what had happened. And they knew he had been forgiven of 10 million. And they knew that that man had only owed him five bucks. So what did they do? And I like this part. I really like this part. It said, when the fellow servants heard and saw what had done, they did not discuss it among themselves. But they went to the king himself. They went to the king and they said, King, do you realize a servant that you forgave 10 million wouldn't forgive a fellow servant? One of his fellow servants, $5. The king was so wroth, the Bible says. He was so angry. He said, bring him back here right now. Bring him back here right now. They went out on the street and found that bloated, puffed up, arrogant whatever I run out of words I need Jeff Arnold to help me here. <laughs> you got it you got it all right bring him here they grabbed the gun they run him here for the king didn't I forgive you of ten yes you did and you couldn't forgive one of your fellow believers five dollars what's wrong with you what do you think this is and he he worked. He said, you know somebody, the 10 million. Now, this is something that almost don't theologically fit sometimes in my, in my understanding. Because he said, that which was forgiven you, you owe it to the very last penny. Right. And all of his debt was put back on his head. And Jesus ended the story by simply saying that if we cannot forgive one another, then our heavenly father, he cannot forgive us. We've got to have a blessing and an attitude of being mercy. If we want to receive mercy, we've got to have an attitude. An attitude of mercy. Because you will need it one day. Cultivate an attitude of forgiving one another. Merciful. Even when they don't deserve it. Even when they don't ask it. Even when you know that they were wrong. Still. Who was it that was hanging on the cross and said forgive them for they know not. Being stoned Stephen prayed. Lay not this sin to their charge. The attitude of a Christian, the attitude of an apostolic, Holy Ghost, blood, bought, born again believer is filled with an attitude of mercy and compassion. Oh, it should break our hearts when we see division and destruction and, and attitudes of people wanting to get even when God help us to get over that. You know, something that will bless a church when we can get into the attitude of being merciful. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful. And I'm hurrying. I'm going to quit here real quick. And he goes on to the pure in heart. He said, blessed are the pure in heart. He said, "For they're going to see God. And real quick on that thought, let me just say this. This is my idea. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they see God. The pure in heart, everything is pure. When you've when you got an attitude of purity, you're going to see God in everything. And not the devil in everything. 
How often we blame the devil for stuff and turns out it might have been God. So instead, why don't we just go ahead and give God the credit? And even if the devil did do it, it's because God allowed it. And so we're going to give God the glory. And God, the devil doesn't get a bit of credit. To God be the glory. Ouch, that hurts. Oh, I don't like that. I don't want to go there. I don't like that. But to God, I came into this world with nothing. I'm going to leave with nothing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For he gives and he takes away. I'm going to bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is in me. Cleanse my heart. Give me a clean heart. A pure heart so I can see you in everything. Would you stand with me? Stand with me as we close out here. You're the salt and the light of the world. Jesus said you're the salt and you're the light. You preserve. You're the preservation. You're the hope. You're the thing that's going to keep this thing preserved until he comes back. You're the light. You're the city that's set on a hill. The light of the world that's going to show people how to come to Jesus Christ. You need to realize that the light that we are is not something that is artificial or something that is made up. It's something that gets down inside. It's an attitude. It's a spirit. It's a way of life. It's the way I work. I love. I talk. I walk. I want to be. Hallelujah. 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 Let it happen. The Bible says without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And I don't know that that means necessarily if I dress unholy, I'm going to be lost. Or if it might mean if I don't dress holy, they won't see Jesus. Without holiness, the world won't see him. But if we will have a spirit of purity. He ends the. He ends. He ends the. The attitudes. The attitudes. Of being. With blessed are you. All through those. Other eight. He said blessed are the. Or blessed are them. Or blessed are the. But the very last one. Blessed are you. When they hate you, when they don't speak well of you like they did the prophets. And I'm not saying we're going out trying to get people to hate us. God forgive me. But when we live right, there's going to be things that aren't going to fit just right. When we are Christians, when we are what we're supposed to be. But with holiness and godliness and an attitude of purity and righteousness, they're going to see us. No, they're going to see him. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let your goodness, your righteousness, the things that your good work so that they will glorify your father. Not to pat you on the back. Not to say, oh, what a good Christian. What a good preacher. What a good teacher. What a good. No, no, no. That's, that's all glory and honor goes to him. And that's what I like about this church is that we know he gets the glory. We know where it all goes to. It belongs to him. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. He's my savior. He's my keeper. He's the one who blessed me with an attitude. All nine of them. All nine of them. The nine fruit of the Spirit. It's one fruit with nine elements the same. I want to have it. And God will give it to you. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn this back to pastor. But before I do. Before I close this. I want to ask you. Where's your attitude? I need an attitude adjustment about every five minutes sometimes. <laughs> Help us. Keep our focus. Amen. Every now and then we've got to say, Lord, I'm... He does, you know what? He doesn't walk around with a billy club just waiting for you to... He, he does... Huh. He's a gentleman. And he will help us. But we've got to have a willing spirit. An attitude. Praise God. Let's lift our hands and love him right now. Jesus, I love you and I praise you. Would you just flow to the front and let's 
close this out in prayer. Praise the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to have attitudes that reflect you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We'll talk to the Lord for a little bit here. Thank you, Jesus. I want to submit myself to the power of Jesus Christ so that he can change me to be more like him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Touch me, Lord, I pray. Would you talk to the Lord for a few minutes tonight?